Welcome to What I Ate in a Day, 1970s style. And it is not the day of, it is the day before. And that's, that's what I always tend to do with these. I like to do a little bit of prep the night before. So let me show you, first off, which cookbook I am using. I'm finally, finally covering one of these comprehensive Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks. This particular edition, look at that strawberry shortcake, was published in 1976, right there. There are lots of different editions of this book. I think I also have one from the 1950s. This evening, I'm gonna be making cinnamon raisin bars. I worked on this menu weeks ago. That's something that I do for fun. Sometimes I go through my cookbooks and I make up menus and then sometimes I use them for videos. At the time, these bars sounded absolutely delicious. They still sound pretty good today. I'm gonna get started because there are a couple different layers to these bars that have to bake and cool and do all of these things. And it is already 8.30 PM. Why do I always do this to myself? <laughs> the first ingredient is gonna be some sugar, some cornstarch. The way cornstarch feels when you measure it or touch it gives me the willies. <laughs> it's so weird and squeaky. Some water and raisins, of course, the star of the show. I'm just supposed to cook this uh, over medium heat until it is thickened and bubbly. Oh yeah, we got some bubbling happening in there. That's <laughs> That came out wrong. It's not really quite thickened yet, so I'm gonna give it some more time. I kind of thought these raisins would break down a little bit more. I've never made these before, so I have no idea. <laughs> I've never eaten them. This is all new to me. It looks pretty syrupy, so I'm gonna call it and take it off the heat. Filling is cooling over there, and I'm gonna work on the base and topping of these bars. I'm cutting this recipe in half. I almost always cut recipes in half when I can, but if this turns out really well and I really love it, I'll include the full recipe in the description down below. Cream, butter, and sugar. Butter that I have been softening pretty much all day. And we've got brown sugar. Half a cup. This is another one of those recipes. There's no liquid, it is butter, it is sugar, it is other things, it's gonna be crumbly. So I'm going in with my hands. I think we're just gonna get a better result. So I gotta stir all of my dry ingredients into this. Three quarters of a cup of flour. Quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Three quarters of a cup of oats. It does say quick cooking oats. That's not what I have. I just have plain rolled oats. So I hope that's gonna be okay. I've swapped these in recipes before and it's fine. So I hope the trend continues with this recipe. That is what old fashioned or rolled oats look like. Quick oats are just rolled oats like this, cut into smaller pieces so that they cook faster. You can cook them in the microwave. They take like a minute or so. I just prefer these like when I'm having breakfast, I like a little bit more texture to my oats. Gotta go in with my hands, It's this is happening. And just kind of squeeze this together and make sure it's like mixed. It's gonna be just like crumbs. If you're making a crumble topping for like an apple crumble or a cherry crumble or crisp, as we sometimes call them here, that's what this is. I mean, this is basically the same thing. Just make sure that the butter and the flour are kind of evenly distributed. You're gonna have a sandy concoction with oats in it. This is an eight by eight dish that I buttered and I am supposed to take half of these crumbs and press them into the bottom of this dish. Admittedly, these bars, they do not scream spring to me, but it's been very chilly here in Ohio. I mean, it's been like in the 40s. Just pressing that firmly, this is gonna form the base of the bars. So that is what we've got so far. Next layer is gonna be raisin filling. I think it's cool enough. That is what the filling is like. Just kind of distribute it evenly or try. I think once these bake and everything kind of comes together and they're iced, I think it's gonna be good. I've also made a bar similar to this where you put jam, like raspberry or strawberry jam, where these raisins are. Some people would probably like that a little better than raisins. I love raisins. I mean, I think they're good. That's pretty even. Setting that aside because we've got one more layer of our crumbs, but I have to do something different here. You're mixing in some water. So I'm dampening the crumbs with a little water. Yeah. <laughs> It says to spoon this over and then pat smooth. And it's kind of difficult to do that sometimes without disturbing the other layers. So we'll see how well I do. Okay, it's, it's getting there. There's enough crumbs, I think, to cover the top. As for getting these out of the pan, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling these might be cemented in here. I did butter the dish, so that should help, but I probably should have used parchment paper. 
Time-wise, we're at 9.07. Gotta bake them for 35 minutes. Maybe I should ice them tomorrow. We'll see if I can stay awake long enough to let these cool so that I can ice them. <laughs> I think we're there. Yes, some raisins, they're peeking through. It's fine. Now I have to bake these for 35 minutes at 350 degrees. Good morning. I didn't finish the raisin bars last night. It was getting dangerously close to my bedtime. They weren't quite cool enough. I wasn't confident that they weren't gonna melt the icing if I just made it. We'll take care of those a little bit later, but right now it is breakfast time. And my dish for the morning is gonna be this Denver scramble. I'm also gonna be sticking with my instant coffee theme as I usually do for these videos, but do I have something special? Maxwell House International Coffees. When I was growing up, I remember thinking these were so, so fancy and they were introduced in the 70s. This one that I have is Swiss Mocha. I know that they have several different flavors. They've even added a few just as like the times have changed. I think when I was little, they came in metal tins and they had the, like, the national flag of whatever coffee was being represented. So I'm just melting a little bit of butter in my skillet. I'm gonna spread that around just a little. I've got some green pepper and a little bit of finely diced onion, very finely diced because if you've watched my videos, you know how I feel about big pieces of crunchy onion. So I've let these cook for just a couple minutes. You can see things are getting a little brown in there. I have some cut up ham and some canned mushrooms. The recipe indicates canned, so that is what I used. I don't mind them, but you know, fresh mushrooms are probably preferable. And I've got two eggs that I'm gonna beat. I'm gonna, oh, that backfired. I'm gonna throw some more butter in the pan and it just kind of like flung across. And I hope I caught that on camera. I did add just like a little bit of milk because the recipe said I needed to. When I'm making scrambled eggs, I don't usually add milk to them, uh, but you do you, do what you want. And I kind of wanted to follow the recipe. I'm gonna just start scrambling. In the background, I also have a piece of toast in the toaster. It says to use a slightly rounded tablespoon. The eggs did get a little overcooked because I thought I turned the burner off when I went to make my coffee and I turned it to low. Try to get a little bite of every single component. Mmm, that's really good. And I didn't put any salt and pepper in this because the ham is like super salty. I don't even really notice the onions because I chopped them so tiny and I cooked them until they were very soft. You know, I do what I can so that I don't have the texture part. And then toast, I mean, it's toast. <laughs> and coffee <laughs> that is sort of like a coffee hot chocolate hybrid, let's be honest. Mm, it's pretty good. Pretty good breakfast, pretty simple breakfast. I think I had a comment on one of my videos that was like, you could have just eaten cornflakes. Yes, I, I could have just eaten cornflakes. They were around in each of the decades that I've covered, but I wanted to cook a dish from a cookbook from that era. I think I could make this breakfast now and be perfectly happy with it. I would add cheese. <laughs> Let's be honest, I would add cheese even though I don't super, super miss it. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my breakfast and then I will get to those raisin bars and icing them. It's finally time to ice my cinnamon raisin. Wait, are they cinnamon raisin? <laughs> oh, they are, yes. It's finally time to ice my cinnamon raisin bars. Now I did manage to get the entire pan out in one piece and I kind of cut off one of the edges just so that you can see how thick the raisin filling is. The icing is really simple. It's just powdered sugar, cinnamon, and a little bit of milk. So in my bowl, I'm placing half a cup of powdered sugar. This icing recipe is not like super precise either. Just a little bit of cinnamon. I actually really like cinnamon, so I'm putting a little extra. A teeny tiny little bit of milk. And I can add more if I need it. Uh, I'm thinking it might need a little more. It needs to be drizzling consistency, and it's, it's like more of a fondant. The tiniest, teeniest little bit. It's a little bit softer. I think I still want it just like a little bit more drizzly than that. Aha, perfect. I'm not gonna be too precise about it. So 
there we have cinnamon raisin bars. I'm not gonna eat these just yet because it is almost lunchtime, so I'm gonna get ready for my next meal. And that next meal is going to be Taos Salad Toss. Looking at this recipe again, I probably should have put the dressing together early and let it sit in the fridge. I think it's gonna be fine. Also, this recipe makes so much dressing that I'm sure I'm gonna have some leftover. So I'll probably end up refrigerating those leftovers and then making myself another salad. Our dressing is an avocado, half an avocado, because just like the other recipes, I'm cutting this in half. Mash it up. <laughs> Slippery. This dressing may just have chunks of avocado in it. And some sour cream. We're switching it up to a real big spatula. Interesting ingredient, Italian dressing. And it doesn't say Italian dressing mix, it just says Italian dressing in the recipe. So I'm going for like a pre-made Italian dressing situation. And this happens to be the knockoff Aldi version of the Olive Garden Italian salad dressing. <laughs> then we've got some seasoning, chili powder, dehydrated onion, and then a little salt. I don't see pepper in the ingredients list, but it does mention it in the recipe itself. So maybe I'll add a little bit of pepper. That is the dressing. It's not quite as green as I thought it would be. I added a few more black olives and some tomatoes. And then I have one of my cinnamon raisin bars. And I'm just drinking ice water, but I'm drinking it from this very cute owl glass. <laughs> I don't use these too often. Let's try the salad. It's a nice big salad. That's why I didn't, I was originally gonna make a soup to go with this, but it's such a big salad that I didn't think I needed it. it doesn't have like a ton of lettuce in it either. It was just a cup of lettuce. I used shredded green leaf lettuce. You could probably use whatever you want. It just says shredded lettuce in the recipe. That was such a big bite. Let me start. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start again and focus on getting some salad on my fork rather than talking. It's pretty good. I'm a little surprised there was no lime juice in the dressing or like somewhere in here. It's good. I want the dressing to be a little more flavorful, like maybe a little saltier. I don't know. Overall though, it is a really good salad. This is something that I would probably throw together now without a recipe from the 70s. And I know it's not time for dessert, but I gotta try my cinnamon raisin bar on camera. There it is. Mmm, that is so good. Like a warm cinnamon baked oatmeal. I really like that. Again, I like raisins. I love oatmeal. I think you could switch up the filling on this. Maybe use a different dried fruit or even like a fig jam. Maybe cook up some dates and put in there if you don't like raisins. I don't know. Do you like dates if you, if you don't like raisins? I'm not sure. I'm gonna go ahead, finish my lunch, and I'll be back very soon to start dinner because I am making a slow cooker recipe. The main dish for dinner is going to be meatloaf florentine. I just don't think that I could do a menu from the 1970s without doing a slow cooker recipe. The 70s are really when they kind of exploded. They were the new fangled gadget to cook in. Everybody was getting one. I just had to do it. I love a slow cooker recipe anyway. And although it is not hot here yet, do remember that when the weather starts to get really warm, a slow cooker meal is a great way to cook something without heating up your kitchen. This meatloaf Florentine recipe makes a pretty massive amount of food. Even if I cut it in half, it's gonna make over a pound of meatloaf. So what I think I'm gonna do is mix everything up and then divide that into two smaller loaves and put one in the freezer. The first thing I do before I do anything is I'm gonna grease the inside of this just by spraying it with a little bit of oil. Combine eggs, milk, breadcrumbs, spinach, and soy sauce. I've got one egg here, some milk. Move that a little closer to the camera. Some breadcrumbs, soy sauce, salt, and then just a few dashes of hot sauce. You can use whatever you have on hand, whatever you like. It just says bottled hot sauce. It's more than a few dashes, isn't it? I'm using half a bag of this frozen spinach. I believe this is what makes it meatloaf quarantine. <laughs> was I supposed to thaw this? I definitely was supposed to thaw this. <laughs> I guess I could try to take it out. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get a bowl, hold on. <laughs> we'll try to get some of this out as much as I can. We'll just have a little bit of frozen spinach in there. I'm just gonna microwave this and then squeeze some of the moisture out. 
It's thawed out. I'm just gonna squeeze some of that juice out. There's still a few frozen chunks in here. It's fine, everything's fine. <laughs> mix that in. The recipe called for just beef. This meatloaf mix was actually on sale for $3.99 a pound. It's much cheaper than just getting beef. So I am making a little bit of a substitution. In case you didn't know, the meatloaf mix itself is gonna be beef and pork. Here it is. Oh, that's got a little bit of paper on it. And my hands are clean. I'm gonna get squishing. <laughs> Oh, it's very cold in here. I'm trying to be a little bit gentle as well, but I wanna make sure that it gets mixed too. So I'm just kind of making sure everything gets gently incorporated. I can really smell that soy sauce in there more than anything, I think. Oh, it's, it's looking pretty mixed. And I am gonna weigh this mixture so that I can get two like equally sized loaves. Set this mixture aside and make a meatloaf for the freezer. I have my prepared crock. I'm using my little slow cooker. So I think I may just make this into like a round shape and we'll serve this meatloaf in wedges perhaps. My little round loaf. I think that's gonna be just fine. Get you out of the way. That is what the meatloaf is looking like in the bottom. So now I'm supposed to let that meatloaf cook in the slow cooker for four hours on high. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna take its temperature and see how it's going. I do plan on making a couple of side dishes to go with dinner. And that's one of the reasons I really like having a slow cooker recipe because I can just kind of let it go for a while and then kind of pull it all together at the end for a full meal. I just checked the internal temperature of the meatloaf and it is done way earlier than it's supposed to be. I kind of thought that might happen, especially because I made it much smaller than the original recipe. So I just went ahead and I turned it from high to low it'll just stay warm in the slow cooker and I'm gonna get started on my side dishes. The first side that I'm making is from the relishes section and it's gonna be these cinnamon apple rings. These would sometimes make appearances on salad bars when I was growing up. Maybe they're still there, I just haven't been to a salad bar in a while. I enjoy these and I thought I would like to try making them at home. Sugar, red hot cinnamon candies, and some water. It's supposed to cook over medium heat. And I just cook this until the candies and the sugar dissolve. Most of the candies have dissolved away. I still have some stuck to the spoon. Now I have to add my apples. Two different apples here, a Granny Smith and something else. I can't remember what it was, a Cosmic Crisp or something. It just needed to get used up. Stir these in. And again, these were supposed to be apple rings. I really didn't want to go through the fuss coring them and cutting them into thin rings. So I just did wedges. Let's see how it works out. Now these just need to simmer in the liquid until they are soft. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my next side dish, which will be basil carrots. So I've got some lovely carrots here. First, I just need to melt some butter. The butter. My butter is mostly melted, so now I'm adding some sliced fresh carrots. Just gonna let the butter kind of coat those. So now it's just a little dried basil and some salt. Pretty much it. I just have to cover these and let them cook for, it says 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna keep an eye on them. Carrots are simmering away over here. Now I'm going to make a sour cream sauce for the meatloaf. It was included in the recipe as sort of like a little aside. Canned mushrooms from this morning. Blend those in with a little bit of flour. This is a really unusual to me recipe. I think there was maybe supposed to be, you know what? I am remembering that those, those mushrooms were supposed to be undrained. So I think I'm gonna add a touch of water to this. Just throw a little water in there. Just like a tiny bit, you know? Making some sort of paste. <laughs> some sour cream. There's no other liquid in this. It is just flour, mushroom, sour cream, and then some shives. Yeah, I like to do this with scissors. And yes, you can get a knife. I, I just prefer scissors. Let that do its thing and move on to the very, very last and probably easiest dish. Some instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> I have these left over from when I made funny face hamburgers. I need to use them up. They feel very 70s to me. So this is kind of perfect. They, you know, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. I use like a little bit of them to decorate those funny face hamburgers. So I'm using like a little bit less than the recommended amount of boiling water to hydrate these. You just dump, you pour in your boiling water, give it a stir and wait for them to turn into mashed potatoes. These are really great for camping. I think that's really when I remember eating these. They're very shelf stable. See how they're thickening up. As though you have never had or seen instant mashed potatoes. Potatoes are the first ingredient. It's it's fine. I'm gonna just kind of let these do their thing and then I'll get everything plated up.
There's the plate. I'm trying desperately to find a corner to film this in where the lighting is right and there's not a huge mess. It's just not happening. So this is this is where I'm gonna be trying my food, <laughs> standing up by the stove. I guess let's start with the meatloaf. Hmm. Okay, I'm surprised. I really like that meatloaf. And it could be because I use like a meatloaf mix with pork and beef. The flavor is so much better than I expected. That's a good one. I'm excited about that one. Mmm. And it's really good with the sour cream sauce too, heck. Let's try the basil carrots. I really like carrots. This was a pretty simple preparation. Mm, mm hmm goes really well with the meatloaf. I mean, instant mashed potatoes. I don't really have a recipe for these. Honestly, sometimes you just like kind of can't beat an instant mashed potato. <laughs> they were perfect for this application. And then finally, cinnamon apples. I kind of love how these look, especially with the Granny Smith apples because they're green on the outside and red on the inside. Mm. I made a really good plate, you guys. <laughs> that combination of foods, like it was really good. The peels on the apples stay on, which I really enjoy. It's kind of a nice change of texture. Really good cinnamon flavor. The ones that I've seen on a salad bar, they're usually super, super red. So they probably have a lot more of those cinnamon candies in them, but these taste very good. All of this food goes together well. I am surprised. Not that I would have deliberately planned a bad menu or something, but I just, sometimes you just don't know how these things are gonna turn out. But I am super pleased. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy my dinner and I'll probably take a day or two to reflect as I normally do and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. So I wrapped up my day of 1970s meals a few days ago. I've taken a little bit of time to think about how it all worked, what went well, all of that good stuff and I also wanted to talk a little bit about this book. So I got all of my recipes for my day of 1970s cooking from Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook. This one was published in 1976. There have been lots of these comprehensive like Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks published published over the years. I recently saw a more modern one that said 17th edition. So I don't know exactly how many there are out there, but at least 17. <laughs> this is one of those good kinds of cookbooks to have in your collection that has a little bit of everything. This one has a lot of very nice photos. Also on the inside of the back cover, it has this chart of weights and measures, can sizes, emergency substitutions, all kinds of things. That's pretty common in one of these types of cookbooks. You know, it's really funny. I swear this photo of this broccoli dish has appeared in at least three or four <laughs> of the smaller Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks that I have covered. They have color photographs before each section. So each tab represents a different category. This one's the cookie category. There's even a section on canning and preserving. A really nice kind of solid basic cookbook to have. As for the recipes that I cooked, so I've made two other videos that contain a full day of cooking sort of within one decade and actually from one cookbook, 1950s, 1960s. With those other videos, I think I said all of the recipes were good. There was nothing that I didn't like that I, you know, disliked eating. All of these recipes were great. It wasn't that I was just tolerating what I was eating. These are things that I would make again. I don't know if I just made really good choices <laughs> or if this food is more similar to the food that I would have now just because it's a little bit later in time. Starting with breakfast, a Denver scramble, like really good. Basically jazzed up scrambled eggs, but tasty. It's nice to add a little something extra to your scrambled eggs. I usually eat mine plain or with sriracha. This had a little ham, green pepper, mushroom. It's a nice addition. It's kind of like an omelet, but a little bit easier to manage in the morning. And then lunch. So I have updates on the salad. It made a ton of dressing. So I made the appropriate amount of salad dressing to go with the ingredients that I used, but it was just too much. So I had some leftover and I ended up making that salad again the next day. And the taste of the dressing did improve quite a bit sitting overnight. So I would suggest mix the dressing ingredients in advance. I should have done that. I wasn't paying attention to the recipe when I was planning the menu. I love a salad as a meal with different things mixed in. This had beans, cheese, black olives, green chilies. Everything was just like an A plus for me. And it made a really good, like nice big salad that you could just have as your entire, entire meal. And then those baked oatmeal raisin bars, really delicious. Just warm, cinnamony, baked oatmeal. I mean, I know that's in the name. They're just so good, really. And that cinnamon icing just kind of like topped things off so beautifully. I like them with the raisins. I think you could probably substitute something else if you don't like raisins. And then for dinner, that was like my big meal. I had all of these things and all of these sides. That meatloaf, 
That meatloaf was awesome. I was surprised. It just didn't seem like there was much to it. I did make a substitution. The recipe called for ground beef. Meatloaf mix was a lot cheaper at the store that I was at. So I ended up going with the meatloaf mix that had beef and pork in it. So that probably improved things a little bit, but really it could not have been easier to put that together and throw it in the crock pot. It was so good. It was so good. It got deliciously like browned on the outside. I can't say enough good things about it. It's definitely something that I would I would make again. I would make it for other people even, really. It was it was that good. I like meatloaf in general, but I know that there are a lot out there that you know, maybe they're lacking in flavor or the texture is just not very good. This had everything. It was very well balanced, right amount of seasoning and saltiness, lovely texture, like perfect, perfect texture, not super crumbly and not tough or like anything like that. It was, it was great. I even like that sour cream sauce. Thinking back, I think I was supposed to blend the mushrooms and the sour cream together, not cut them up into small pieces, but it still worked and it still complemented that meatloaf like really well. Very enjoyable on that. The carrots were good. I like buttery carrots anyway. Anyway, and that's basically what these were. Another super easy thing that you can just like cut up carrots, cook them in some butter and like walk away for a little bit. It was perfect. I can't really like take too much credit for the mashed potatoes because they were potato flakes. But again, it went really well with the meal. They were really delicious, not bland at all. And then those cinnamon apples, just a really nice way to like compliment and like round out the meal. A little bit of spicy sweetness, just a really nice way to complete everything. Everything was so balanced, I guess. So if you look at that, plate there were many different colors there were different textures and I think that that makes for a really good meal in general just having all those things I'm gonna have a really hard time <laughs> deciding exactly which recipes to put in the description I don't know that I can type every single one I'm thinking I'll probably include the recipe for the cinnamon raisin bars probably the meatloaf and maybe the salad dressing the other things you can kind of figure out on your own like make scrambled eggs and add green pepper and ham and mushroom to them you probably don't need a recipe for that and same with the carrots, you know. So I'll include a few of the recipes in the description down below. And I will also include page numbers. So if you have this cookbook in your collection already, I'll include the page numbers of the recipes that I made so that like you can just refer to your book. That might make it easier for some people. Overall, I think it was a great day. I think I'm getting a little bit better at planning these out and like filming them. I'm gonna continue to do these. I, I wanna do some other decades, maybe revisit some of the ones that I've already done. These videos are so much fun. You all seem to like them, so I'm gonna keep making them as long as as long as you seem to enjoy them. So again, the book that I used is Better Homes and Gardens New Cookbook from 1976. If you like cookbooks and recipes from the 1970s, I have an entire playlist and I will link it right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I make videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!